Well, I'm excited about today. I love this story in the book of Judges about Gideon. And I think there's such important and valuable lessons for us. So as we open up and take this journey together, I I just want to lift our worship and our time together up to the Lord in prayer. Will you please join me? Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you that your word calls on us to sing out in worship and give praise. We thank you, Lord, that when we cry out, you hear our prayers. Lord, today meet each of us right where we're at. Help the roots of our faith grow deeper and help us step forward knowing and trusting that you are with us every step of the way. Walk with us now. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Look forward to taking this journey with you today.
Well, welcome again, and thank you for being with us. There are a lot of great characters. There are a lot of great stories in the Bible. But I always find the story of Gideon extremely intriguing. And maybe because I identify with Gideon in many, many respects. Well, today we continue our story on the life of Gideon. And the title of our message is, Lord, please show me a sign. Give me something, Lord. I need to see a sign. And we're going to continue in Judges chapter 6 if you want to follow in your Bibles today. Last week, at the beginning of chapter 6, we saw how an angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and proclaimed to Gideon that the Lord was with Gideon and that Gideon was indeed a mighty warrior. The angel of the Lord promised Gideon that the Lord would be with him and that with the help of the Lord, Gideon would lead the Israelites as they strike down the powerful Midianites. But Gideon struggles, and he questions the angel of the Lord, and he confesses, Hey, Lord, I feel unqualified to lead Israel in battle. Do you remember? I'm the weakest clan. I'm from the weakest clan, and I'm the least in my family. I don't think you've picked the right guy. Gideon is struggling to trust and have faith in God that God will really equip him and Israel to come against the mighty Midianites. Well, today we continue our story and Gideon is still struggling to muster up his faith and to trust enough in the Lord to move forward. Gideon still needs more assurance from God that God will really have his back and give Israel what it needs to defeat this mighty opposition, the Midianites. And that's where we're going to pick up our story today. We're in Judges chapter 6, and I'll begin with verse 17. Gideon replied, If I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it really is you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. Gideon went in, prepared a young goat, and from an ephah of flour, he made bread without yeast. Putting the meat in a basket and its broth in a pot, he brought them out and offered them to him under the oak. The angel of God said to him, take the meat and the unleavened bread, place them at the on this rock and pour out the broth. And Gideon did so. With the tip of the staff that was in his hand, the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread. Fire flared from the rock, consuming the meat and bread, and the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, Ah, sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. It's such a cool story. Really amazing to see this encounter between Gideon and this angel of the Lord. Gideon asks the angel of the Lord for a sign. And the Lord (laughs) obliges. Gideon prepares a sacrifice and he, he brings this offering out and places it before the angel of the Lord. And And the angel of the Lord takes his staff and he touches the meat and he touches the bread and fire flares up from the rock and consumes the bread and consumes the meat. Gideon has asked for a sign and the angel of the Lord has provided Gideon with a sign. Now, Gideon must be ready to trust in the Lord and move forward as the leader of Israel as they battle the Midianites, right? He's ready. Well, the answer is sort of. Gideon does summon up all the troops. He gathers the troops of Israel together, and they're, in a sense, facing the Midianites and other eastern people who have gathered. And they're ready to fight against Israel, and Israel has gathered together. 
But Gideon is still struggling to fully trust that God will give him and them the power to defeat this vast, powerful army of the Midianites. So Gideon decides, you know, I'm going to keep speaking to God about my concerns. And he does. So let's listen to this in Judges chapter 6, verse 36. Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand, as you have promised, look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. If there is dew only on the fleece, and all the ground is dry, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you said. And that is what happened. Gideon rose early the next day, he squeezed out the fleece and wrung out the dew, a bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, Do not be angry with me. Let me make just one more request. Allow me one more test with the fleece. This time make the fleece dry and the ground covered with dew. That night, God did so. Only the fleece was dry, all the ground was covered with do. So I think we should start right away with, with a really important question. Is it okay that Gideon asked for signs to confirm that God was with him, to confirm that God would really fulfill his promise to Gideon? And maybe we should personalize this as well. Bringing it back to our time and our own situations, is it okay for us to ask God for a sign when we're trying to discern and make important decisions? Or should it be that we just trust God and continue to walk forward and not ask for any signs? What do you think? Well, let me say right up front, this is a really challenging topic. And Bible scholars have very strong opinions about it. For now, I want to bring it back to the story of Gideon. I would say most commentators that have spoken about the story of Gideon lean this way. They see Gideon's requesting signs in, on multiple occasions as a sign of his weakness, as a sign of lack of faith. And they kind of focus mostly on that as they relate to this story of Gideon. I just want to give you one example it's Bible uh, commentator and pastor John MacArthur. He says this about Gideon. Gideon's two requests for signs in the fleece should be viewed as weak faith. And, and that's not the strongest commentary I read about Gideon and the signs he asked for. So let's get back to the question. Is it okay for us to ask for signs from God when we're trying to discern and make important decisions in our life? Well, let me start by saying, I personally, I do it all the time. As a church family, we've been discussing, praying, and now we're actually voting on the possibility of merging with Mercy Road Church. Through the whole process, I have had a very specific prayer that I have brought before the Lord over and over and over again. And the prayer goes like this, Lord, Lord, please, if this is the right door for our church family to walk through, will you burst open the door? Will you give us signs that this is the right door for us to walk through? And Lord, if this is not of you, if this does not glorify you, may you close the door. May, may, may you shut off this opportunity and make it clear to us that this is not of you. I pray this in Jesus' name. I can't tell you how many times I have prayed that prayer. And I think many of you have prayed a similar prayer over our circumstance. Well, well what are we doing? We're asking God for clear signs that this step we are considering is of him, that it will glorify him. And we're asking God to make it clear, to give us clear signs. Close the door if it's not right. Burst open the door if this is pleasing and glorifying to you. I think we ask for signs from God all the time. 
Just other examples. God, if this is the right job, I'm interviewing for a job. If this is the right job, please make it clear to the one who's interviewing me. Please give me the right words to say so that I'll get this job, Lord, if it be your will. God, if I'm supposed to volunteer in this ministry, please, Lord, give me signs that this is the right time for me to step through that door. I think it's normal for us to ask for signs. And we see it biblically, and it's not just Gideon. And so I believe it's not uncommon to ask for signs. And I think as we walk forward, it's fairly natural to ask God to give us signs and clarity as we take a journey that we want to glorify him and walk in the ways that he longs for us to walk. Now, I do believe these commentators are right, that, that it is fair to say that Gideon was struggling with his faith, that he was full of doubts, and he was struggling to believe that God would really do this amazing thing that he told Gideon he would do. But for what it's worth, I just want to look at a background of Gideon as we think about what he was trying to do in this moment. I think many Bible commentators have been way too hard on Gideon, and here's why. Let's look at the life of Gideon as best as we can before this moment in encounter with an angel of the Lord. One, we know that for seven years, Israel had been doing evil in the eyes of the Lord, per perhaps longer. But in this specific story, we're told about seven years. And during this time when they had turned and done evil, the Lord, number two, had given them into the hands of the Midianites. He, he had kind of turned them over and allowed the Midianites to basically run over them. Three, we know that the Midianites were brutally oppressing the Israelites. It was so bad that the angel of the Lord found Gideon hiding in a wine press so he could thresh the little bit of wheat that Israel still had. Four, we know that Gideon was not teeming with self-confidence because he saw his clan as the weakest of all the clans and himself as the least in his family. Gideon was not coming from a very confident place. His self-confidence was low. And five, we know that Gideon's father had an altar to Baal and an Asherah pole beside it. Baal was a pagan god of storms and rain, and Asherah was the mother goddess of love, war, and fertility. So in Gideon's household, they weren't exactly representing a strong faith in God. And that's what Gideon's life had been and the culture had been. They had been doing evil in the eyes of the Lord. So Gideon wasn't in a great environment. to It wasn't a conducive environment to have a thriving, robust faith in Christ, in, in the Lord. And that's the place that Gideon gets met by this angel of the Lord. I think coming from this environment, it makes a great deal of sense that Gideon would need a fair amount of affirmation if he really was going to believe that it was the Lord who was speaking to him and that the Lord would actually follow through and do the promise that he had laid before Gideon and make Gideon the leader who could lead the Israelites to defeat the Midianites. Now, one reason I feel this way is this. Notice that God does not get angry with Gideon in needing these signs. No, instead, it's the opposite. God doesn't get angry. Instead, he gives Gideon not one, not two, but three signs that it really is him and that Gideon can trust him to fulfill the promise through Gideon. If Gideon's lack of faith were the most important lesson that God wanted to reveal to us in this story, God would have jumped all over Gideon for his lack of faith. He would have been angry that Gideon needed not just one sign, but three signs. But instead, and I think this is vitally important, God meets Gideon right where Gideon is at. 
and he provides the signs that Gideon needs to build his trust and build his faith and to be able to walk forward in the place that God was calling him. I think this story teaches us far, far more about the desire of God to meet Gideon and to meet us right where we are at and to build up our faith and build up our trust so that we can walk forward and be his light to the world around us. I believe this story, more than showing the lack of faith of Gideon, is a story showing the mercy, grace, and patience of God to help us even when we are struggling to have deep enough faith to journey forward. I believe Gideon asked for these signs from God with a proper motive. He was struggling. His faith had been broken. His culture had turned away from God. And Gideon was crying out, I, I need to know. God, I need some assurance from you that this really is you and that you'll carry through with the promise. Gideon needed encouragement so that he could muster up the faith and fulfill the role that God had for him. And guess what? God did this for Gideon. He, he gave him the signs, and God guided Gideon to a place of deeper faith so that Gideon could lead the Israelites. Now, Gideon's not alone. If we turn our attention to the New Testament, there's a certain disciple of Jesus who adamantly refused to believe that Jesus had been raised from the dead. Jesus had revealed himself to numerous disciples, most of the disciples, but unfortunately this disciple wasn't there when Jesus revealed himself. And the disciples run back to, oops, I gave it away. <laughs> the disciples run back to Thomas. And they say, Thomas, this is so awesome. Jesus has been raised from the dead. And do you remember how Thomas responds? He says, nope, nope, I'm not going to believe it. I'm not going to believe it unless I can see and I can touch the wounds that Jesus received at the cross. Unfortunately, because Thomas needed these signs, he has forever been known as Doubting Thomas. But I want you to notice something. What did Jesus do in response to the doubts and, Jesus, and Thomas needing a sign? Did he get angry with Thomas? Did he shun Thomas? Did he take him and say, you're no longer welcome into the kingdom of heaven? It's not what Jesus did. He extended mercy and grace to Thomas. And he actually showed Thomas the signs that he needed and he asked for. Thomas, look. And he showed him the wounds. Thomas, look at my side. And he showed him the wound in his side. And Thomas fell to the ground. And his faith was restored and he believed and all Jesus said was, he said, praise for those who do not see, and yet they believe. He didn't shun Thomas. He met Thomas and gave him the signs he needed to restore his faith and move forward as a disciple of Christ. I believe this is the heart of God for us. I believe that Gideon is an example not to show a shame on you, Gideon, for your lack of faith, but to show the love, mercy, grace, compassion of God to meet us where we're at. And, and when we cry out and we ask for a sign, I don't think he says shame on you. I, I think he walks and mercifully meets us and, and he knows our heart. And, and if we call out from the right motive, God meets us in that place and he picks up our eyes and he helps us to deepen our faith and walk forward again. I think that's what this story is all about. And it's not just a story for Gideon, it's a story for you, and it's a story for me. So let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for this amazing story. I thank you that you chose to meet Gideon right where he was at. And when Gideon couldn't come forward in the first sign, you gave him a second. And when the second wasn't enough, you gave him a third sign. 
because you were willing to show mercy and grace and love and compassion to someone who was broken and struggling so that their eyes could be lifted up and they could trust and walk forward in faith. Lord, may the same be true of us. Thank you, Lord, that you meet us where we're at. Thank you when we call out and cry out for a sign and our heart is in the right place. You meet us in that place. Lord, help the roots of our faith grow deeper. Meet us and open up our eyes. We love you, God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you until we gather again. We'll see you soon.